Okay, in this uh, video, I'm going to start talking about some different uh, or, or, or specific decay process, in particular, beta decay. All right. Um, so beta decay is any time, um, uh, it's called this because it's any time that you can actually emit an electron um, to, uh, to, to lower the energy. Um, it's called beta because originally they didn't know what the particles were and they, they just called them beta particles. They eventually figured out that they were electrons and sometimes positrons. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is neutron decay. Neutron decay is when uh, you have a neutron decay into a proton and an electron and an antineutrino. Uh, but in reality, uh, we're we're much we're normally more interested in actually just looking at the nucleus because this happens in the nucleus, um, and so in this case you have some nucleus. We'll just call it X initial. All right, that has some Z and A number, and what it does is it's going to lose. So its its A number stays the same, but one of those neutrons is going to turn into a proton, which means we get a Z plus one here. Okay. Um, we also, again, need the electron and the antineutrino. Okay, so that's the general process. Now, one of the things we're going to ask is, uh, what are the mass requirements of this? So if you remember, um, this only happens if we can go to a lower energy state. If you remember, going to the lower energy state is the same as going to a lower mass. Um, and so what we're going to find is generally uh, that if we can have the mass of the nucleus um, less than the, ma the initial mass of the nucleus, less than the final mass of the nucleus plus the mass of the electron, then it will actually decay. All right, so that's the general, um, uh, uh, sorry, so, so, sorry, I've got that wrong. So it will do this if, uh, it will, it will occur if, um, the mass of the nucleus is greater than uh, the mass final, the mass of the nucleus final, plus the mass of the electron, right, nucleus final, plus the mass of the electron. All right, and so, um, but in reality, if we've, we've talked about this before, we actually normally don't want to actually do this in terms of nuclei. We generally want to turn this, uh, do this in terms of atoms. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, uh, so, so if we actually look at um, the, uh, the equation um, uh, in terms of um, in terms of atoms, what we can do is we can take the nucleus initial and add z times the mass of the electrons. Okay, and we need that to be greater or equal to mass final of the nucleus. All right. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm changing the way I do this. Mass nucleus final plus Z M of electrons, but we still have this one. So this is plus the mass of electron. Now it turns out that this term is going to give us Z plus one times the mass of the electrons, which is great because it turns out that if you remember, this has Z plus one uh, protons in it. And so you end up just getting the equation that um, for a neutron, uh, for neutron decay to happen, you just have that the mass of the initial atom, which is just adding those two together, has to be greater than has to be greater than the mass final of the atom, and that's the whole thing. So for this is for um, neutron decay. So if the initial atom is uh, larger than the final, uh, the mass is larger than the final, then it will decay via a, um, via a, a, a neutron decay. And neutron decay uh, is often written as a beta minus decay because it emits an electron. All right, that's basically the first one about how we actually predict whether something is going to decay via neutron decay.